you can see here I've got a vanity basin, either a single vanity basin with a mirror or I've got a double vanity basin with two mirrors and three sets of drawers or open shelves or whatever it is you need in there. So when I come into the object settings, you can see here I've got a section here for the mirror label text. That's because there's a mirror turned on at the moment. If I turn the mirror off, you'll probably find that label text will disappear. That's why there is no label text in this list here for the drawers, because I don't have any drawers active at the moment. If I went into the settings for cabinets and drawers and turned some drawers on, you will see the list here. And the same will apply here in the graphical interface. Because I've got no drawers, you won't see anything about the drawers. But because I do have a mirror turned on, we can go into the mirror label. Now I don't have this set up into presentation and working and electrical and site plan. That's purely because you wouldn't be nominating this sort of thing on a presentation plan. You wouldn't be noting mirrors and things like that on a sales sketch. Very unlikely anyway. So I haven't gone into that level of detail. So all we've got is a standard label note. And you could, of course, use that on a presentation sketch if you want, just by simply putting it in the correct layer for presentation text. That's fine, and you can still use this label. But it's just that then it's the one label. It will say the same thing in different layers. We don't have a choice of having different options for different layers, which is essentially what the working drawing and the presentation labels do. Now, with the mirror, again, it gets all the information. We can choose whether we want heights and widths and things like that. It gets all the information from the mirror itself. Anything that says auto framed and mirror is just auto framed isn't going to say auto framed in the note. It's just going to say that if you put a frame around the mirror, it will change the note to say framed mirror. So by saying auto frame, because it doesn't have a frame, you can see here it's got no mention of a frame. So Anything that says auto means that it's getting the information from the object and it will automatically fill in that detail for the note. You can override it and you can just say, look, I want a full width mirror. And regardless of whether this is actually a full width mirror or not, because you said show me the note full width mirror, that's exactly what it's going to say, full width mirror. You can also choose to say full width mirror and auto framed mirror. But because I've got the size here, I probably don't want to say full width because I've already got the, the size mentioned. And as a suffix, I'm going to use the top of the mirror. We've chosen the settings that we want. And that's the note that's going to display on there. You can also include as an option in here, height and width. So if you want 900 wide by 800 high mirror, you can include that. If you don't, you can actually turn that off and it won't include the height, width, depth in the notation. So we just set the object up as we want it and say OK. And then when we attach our label, all I have to do with this label, but instead of saying working drawings or presentation drawings, I just tick this box and say I want the object sub-element to be labelled. If I turn that off, you can see I'm back to working drawing presentation, which will make no sense for this label. So you'll get again that purple error saying that object is not associated or the text is incorrect. So in this case, I want to label the sub element. What sub element do I want to label? Do I want to label the drawers or do I want to label the mirror? So as other objects are added, this label will have other things in here as well. So eventually we might have things like shower, screen, vanity taps, that sort of thing if ever we get to want to notate those on our plans as well. But for the moment this is a little bit experimental at the moment as well and it may change slightly but at the moment it seems okay. 
Now I'm labeling the sub element. I've chosen that I want to label the mirror and that's exactly what's going to show here. If I want to label individual sub elements, that'll take it to the next level again. And that's where I can start choosing mirror one and mirror two, which again, in this particular case makes no sense because I've only got the one mirror anyway. And there's little warning notes here to say what you should and shouldn't do. So do not choose label individual sub elements to label a single mirror. So you do not choose that. So for a single mirror, you just leave that. If you had two mirrors like in this one, yes, we would choose that. And we can then say we want to label mirror one and mirror two because these labels aren't clever enough. It's associating to that vanity object. It's not clever enough to know that it wants that part of that vanity object. So that's all we need to do. We've got that there. So if I look at this one here, uh, we'll look at the object first. I'll go into the settings. And again, now I've got label text for the left, middle and right, because I have left, middle and right drawers or shelves. If I turn those off, they'll disappear. They're also now showing up in here. I've got two mirrors, left, middle and right. So I can just go through these, set them up to say what you want it to say. It knows it's a bank of drawers. It knows the middle one is a set of open shelves. Again, you can override and put custom text if you want to. It knows that there's two equal shelves because there's three gaps, but there's actually two shelves is the way that it's always been done. The information is again coming from the object itself, the settings. In this case, I've got the two mirrors and then you can see the two mirrors are different sizes, drawers, shelves. There's four drawers there, there's three drawers there. So they're all different. And when it comes to placing the labels, all I've got to do is just place a label on here, but in the settings, go into here and say, look, I want to label sub elements and I want to label individual sub elements. The sub element I'm doing is the mirror. The individual sub element is mirror one or mirror two. So I can choose those. This one here with the bank of drawers, it's exactly the same label. I'm labeling sub elements. I want to label the drawer and do I want to draw one, draw two or draw three? You just need to set that. I don't have favorites set up to that level of detail in here. I haven't done it just because generally speaking, you probably don't note these on the floor plans anyway. Of course you can note them on the, probably the one is to 50 internals. That's perfectly fine, but you probably wouldn't note these on the floor plan. And you can use these labels anywhere actually. I'll show you in just a moment floor plan sections, elevations. I can alt click an existing label and that's set up exactly all of the settings that were in that label. So in this particular case, I don't want mirror two. I'm just going to change that to mirror one. So, okay. And although logic would say, click somewhere near the mirror, I can click anywhere on this vanity. So long as I'm clicking on the vanity, it doesn't matter where I click. If I pick there, and so there, there's my mirror, 900 wide by 800 high. This one's 700 by 800. So you can see they're two different size mirrors. It gets the information from the actual object itself, not the actual mirror. So normally you would associate that mirror or that label to the mirror, but you can do that. And of course I can pull this off here. It's still associated to that object. So as I select that, label it's still associated as the object even though the arrow is not actually pointing to it it's clever enough to know that the label is associated to an object all of these labels can be applied in elevations and sections just the same as they can in the floor plan so if i open this section up all i need to do is exactly the same as the floor plan select my label go into my settings because i'm doing sub elements make sure i pick the option to label sub elements. I want to label the mirror on this vanity. All I need to do is to label that mirror. The same applies with these where I've got extra sub elements or individual sub elements. I just need to select the individual sub elements and tell it which one it is that I want to label.
again, it doesn't matter where I click on this object, it will still label the sub element that I've asked it to label no matter where I click. So to label the other ones, it's just a case of telling it exactly what you want to label, in this case mirror 2. So I can label mirror 2, I can label the drawers just by choosing the fact that I want to label the drawers and whether I want to label drawers set number 1, 2 or 3. When you select and move an object that has already been labelled, the labels will move with the object. And an interesting thing is, if you were to flip the object, the labels remember the location where you actually selected them from. So they're not actually remembering the fact that you clicked on the mirror, but it remembers the actual location where you chose to associate the label to and it will move those arrows as well. The one thing that you need to watch when you do flip an object is that of course this is no longer mirror one, this is now mirror two, and this is mirror one because it's now the reverse. This is bank of drawers three, this is number two, and this is the bank of drawers number one because the object is flipped, so left becomes right and right becomes left. When it comes to the objects that have the ability to have sub-elements labeled, I've added a small blue L and S in there for label sub-elements. At the moment the vanity bench is the only one that can do sub-elements. As I say this is an experimental feature at the moment. If it works out well I'll add the ability to label sub-elements to other objects as well.